What is up, my squad? This is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Destiny 2. In the last episode, we made it here to Io, located by Cora Ray, and had a run in with our old friends, the Taken. And in this episode, oh, I am so excited! Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me! It tells me that Commander somebody, uh, I don't care, has a plan to attack the so called Almighty. A plan unsupported by any data. However, there are remnants of an old interplanetary defense network here. We shall use it to assess the Almighty's capabilities. Then, we will tell Zavala precisely why his plan is wrong. And oh, I will relish that. Meanwhile, I refuse to squander valuable research opportunities. Therefore, you shall be my assistant. Go. All this talk wastes my time. Okay, but first, I need to take a look at your three weapons that you have on offer. Okay, so, were this the vanilla game, the apps, the launch version of Destiny 2, there is absolutely no question, no debate, that Sunshot would be the immediate choice here. However, things have changed. So now, all three of these weapons are pretty good. I mean, Risk Runner was already okay, but this weapon was garbage. Now, it's a little bit different, so let's take a look at each of these. Okay, Graviton Lance, and remember, this is your first exotic in the game, so I would take a look, well, I mean, unless you got really lucky in a public event, but let's take a look at Graviton Lance. Second shot of a burst rips a hole through space-time, doing high damage and recoil with no fall-off. This is a pulse rifle, but it needs to be treated like a scout rifle. The second shot does a lot more kick, but it's going to do about 80 or 90% of your damage in the burst, so again, treat it kind of like a scout rifle. You only care about hitting the second burst, not the first, so... That is, like it says, it's going to rip a hole through time doing high damage with recoil and no fall off. However, this part right here is the really important part. Cosmology. Kills with this weapon cause enemy targets to detonate and spawn void projectiles that track, track targets. If those void projectiles hit, then blow up and kill the target, they will also in turn explode. This can cause major chain reactions that do cr uh, just a crap ton of damage and is incredibly nice for clearing out ads. I would say, I would go out on a limb right now and say that this is the best exotic in the game at the moment um, of any exotic. However, not far behind it is Sunshot, and Sunshot's always been good. Uh, so with this one, Sunburn, this weapon fires explosive rounds and highlights targets that take damage from Sunshot. That's not the good part, though, um, although it is very helpful in enabling its perk to work. You don't need to be as accurate with this one as you do with Graviton Lance. Targets killed with Sunshot explode in solar energy. This is very similar, a very similar effect to the Graviton Lance. The difference is the Graviton Lance launches its explosions backwards a little bit. They kind of, they actually move from their original position, and that's how they chain react. Sunshot, they explode on impact. Right where you hit them and killed them, they explode right there. Um, which can make it a little easier to chain your explosions, and on top of that, um, also, you don't have to be as accurate thanks to your explosive rounds. They are a lot more forgiving. You can kind of shoot at enemies' feet, and it will do damage. The difference, however, is that the explosion on Sunshot isn't quite as powerful as the explosion on Graviton Lance. So, if you like hand cannons, and you have a hard time hitting your shots, um, but you still want that necessary explosive round, I would still recommend Sunshot to you. But, if you're a little bit more accurate, you like to play more at longer ranges, and you are very, and you can get used to it a little bit better, because it does take more getting used to, Graviton Lance is objectively a better weapon than Sunshot, I would say. This one, however, as much as I must say it is the worst of the three, is still not bad, especially if you like your ARC subclasses. I am specifically looking at something like Stormcaller, I mean... Stormcaller is a good subclass, uh, Striker is the best Titan subclass in almost every scenario, and uh, Arc Strider is the best Hunter subclass in a lot of scenarios. Um, probably the only other debatable one at times is um, Night Stalker. So, this one, Arc Conductor. When taking Arc damage, this weapon becomes more powerful and resists incoming Arc damage. Kills extend the time in this overcharged state. So... Basically, if you can take any arc damage, this includes stepping in arc damage, which is very easy to do on places like Io and Nessus, you can just fire non-stop. However, it also has Superconductor. When Arc Conductor is active, shots fired have the chance to become Chain Lightning and return ammo. Basically, as long as you're killing things with this, once you've activated the perk, you never run out of ammo, it does excessive amounts of damage, and it Chain Lightnings to kill everything. This is an excellent weapon for things such as strikes. Anything that involves clearing large amounts of adds, this is going to be one of the best possible options you can get. P 
pretty much every single uh, enemy type in the game has arc damage that you have to worry about. Really, the least likely you're going to run into is probably with the Hive, unless you run into lots of Knights and Wizards. Um, so... It's really good, but it's a little bit more... Okay, it's a lot more situational than Sunshot and Graviton Lance. I would say all their perks are exceptionally good, but it's whether or not you're going to be able to get more value out of it. And Risk Runner is definitely the least valuable. Uh, Sunshot is... E uh, it's easier to get the value out of, but it's not quite as good as Graviton Lance, which is why I'm going to go with that. Now then, there's only one problem with this. And also because I needed a long-range weapon. There's only one problem with this. It's a lower light. It's a lower power level than this one. Thankfully, however, it is still going to be useful to me um, through the. It is still going to be useful to me throughout the remainder of this campaign. So I am going to hang on to it, even if we are going to be hampered by it a little bit. So we do have a new mission that we can take care of, which is um, right over here called Fury. So we are going to head on over that way, and we're going to take care of this thing. But let me just give you guys a quick demonstration of this perk by killing a couple enemies over here. And we are going to completely ignore the public event that is taking place. So let's head over here and I'm going to kill this phalanx. Right there, that explosion. Now you can also see a some more things popping out. Let's see if I can get a chain reaction here. Hit that scion. There we go. And then it causes another chain reaction. If you have a lot of adds grouped up, that is going to do a lot of damage. It's a very effective thing to have in pretty much any actual mission or strike based scenario. I love Graviton Lance. Ever since they reworked it and they made it actually a competent weapon, because it used to be terrible. Um, like, absolutely terrible. The explosion was really, really bad. It was a lot harder to land the shot because it was a three burst weapon, um, which meant you had to control the first two bursts rather than in just one burst. Um, and the explosion knocked back a lot further, so yeah, it was just not a very good weapon. But uh, if you can handle, if you can uh, handle the recoil, and you can get more used to the way it fires, this weapon is just stupid good. Not only that, if you are one of those people that is into the really terrible PvP in this game, at the moment that I am recording this, at the moment, at this speaking moment before the Forsaken patch changes come around, this I would say is the best weapon to use in the Crucible. It does so much damage. All right, here we go. So let's do this thing. Fury. Fury. Wow, that was a horrible way to pronounce that. Fury. 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 It's Fury. My goodness. Jeez. All right, so let's keep going. I am so happy to have this combo now. I kind of actually like the auto rifle that I had. It was kind of fun to use, but I would much rather have this weapon. And like I said, this is going to last us through the campaign. We're going to be fine with it. Even if it is kind of hindering my ability to gain light level, that's not going to matter. Or power level. I keep saying light level. Um, that's not going to matter as soon as I hit level 20 and then I'm going to actually be able to start infusing things into this. So, oh my goodness, this place is crazy. Also, I love that scene right there. The fact that we're right next to Jupiter just makes this so freaking awesome. I am a fan of this planet. I know not everybody is because a lot of people do treat it like the way I introduced this level. Like a Nessus ripoff kind of. It's a, it's a, uh... It's a second-rate Nessus, but I don't agree with that, necessarily. I feel like this has got a very different feel to it. I don't think he's forgotten. I just think he doesn't care. We'll use a war mine. Part of an interplanetary defense network to scan the Almighty. Oh, a war mind, you say? Well, okay then. Um, I think we're close, but so are the Taken. Vex, too. Pay them no heed, assistance. You and I can deal with them later. Yeah, well, it's good. They're going to get in my way, so I kind of have to deal with them, if you don't mind. Also, the fact that I can get so many kills with this thing before I have to reload also makes it super nice that's the other problem i have with the sunshot while the sunshot does reload incredibly quickly um it actually has one of the fastest reload rates of any hand cannon in the game uh eight shots and you burn through that pretty darn quickly this uh on the other hand you get a lot of shots and you can pretty much one shot most things with it um most of the weaker enemies so that's just gonna destroy everything over there i love this weapon guys you have no idea it's so great 
Um, so in defense of Io, um, because again, a lot of people call this a second rate Nessus. I don't get that criticism. If you want to boil it down to basic aesthetics, ED the European Dead Zone is the forest planet. Titan is the water planet. Nessus is the second forest planet. This I would call the desert planet. It's a lot more barren. It's a lot more canyon, canyon like and rocky. I don't really get why people compare this to Nessus because the Vex are also here too. I mean, the Fallen on the, are on the other three planets, so uh, yeah, I don't really get that criticism. In fact, uh, no wait, they do not show up on this one. I don't think they are not on Io. But yeah, they're on the other three planets. So what's the big deal? Um, Ikora, we found another drill. This one's big, really big. Good. That drill pierced an entrance to the War Mine Vault. The scanner's inside. Gotcha. Let's find the drill controls and get it out of the way. Yep, let's do it. Alright, so we're just going to use kind of Graviton Lance to just kind of blow through everything here. Which is, again, very easy to do because this weapon is just so, like, broken levels of good. And I, you know... I was almost tempted to not pick it because it's broken levels of good. I kind of was thinking about just like maybe uh, trying out Sunshot because Sunshot for the longest time is the gun I would have advocated that you picked because it was objectively better than both of the options for a long time. But nowadays it's just, it's a no brainer at this point. Like look at that. Look at how fast I killed everything with this thing. It's ridiculous. And some strong weapons too, or strong enemies too. There were some Minotaurs in there. There has to be a manual override somewhere in that base. Alright, let's see. So we're going to want to head over here. As fast as we can. I think we need to go up in this direction. How are we going to get in the war mine vault, though, is the question. I believe it's underneath the trail. Sterile neutrino particles have quintupled. He means watch out for the Taken. You should hire a translator, Asher. Yeah, he probably should. And that's the other thing that a lot of people hate, is they really don't like Asher Mir, and I want to talk about him for a second, too. I actually don't mind the guy. First of all, lore-wise, he's actually a pretty cool character. Um, his voice acting is, I think, what really gets everybody. It's like, oh, he's so freaking annoying, but... And, oh, he's the typical, you he's so smart you can't understand him character. But it's like, I don't know. There's a little bit of a... I, I do like... I like the, I guess, the attitude he brings um, after having so many jokey characters like uh, Failsafe. I mean, I love Failsafe, don't get me wrong, but after Failsafe and especially Sloan, the one character I actually can't stand, um, it is kind of nice to it is kind of nice to have a character like Ashtamir who kind of does take things a little too seriously for his own good, but it's kind of fun that way. All right, excuse me. All right, I can actually use this too. It's still a really good weapon. Um, probably should. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think he, he makes up for some good contrast in terms of the story. Asher's a very cool character, though, so if you weren't paying attention, and I should have pointed it out when we were talking to him, he has a, his right arm is actually a Vex arm. And it's not the fact that, like, he stole it and put it on as, like, a prosthetic or something. No, his arm actually is transforming into a Vex arm. He is slowly but surely being transformed into a Vex. Um, the thing about the Vex is if you are, if you become contaminated by their energy or their power, you actually will start to slowly turn into them. Um, you will become one of their uh, constructs, which is kind of a terrible way to go when you think about it, but it's not the first time it's happened with Asher. There's actually been many cases in uh, in the lore where this where that kind of thing has happened, so it's not, a, it's not by any means a first-time thing. All right, y'all can just have one of those. I really don't want to deal with you. There we go. No, you are not. Helping him out, thank you very much. Nice work. Let's find that override. Yeah, it's just up here. Right, let's hurry. Okay. Perfect. I think we've got the drill going. Good. Return to the drill site and get into the war mind vault. I am eager to discredit Vu Vu Zela's plan to attack the Almighty. That was very clever. <laughs> oh my gosh, more enemies? You gotta be kidding me. I thought we were home free. Get out of here, Taken Wizard. You have no place here. Also, that is that's the other thing is I actually do find that like void energy has like the most usefulness in this game. It really does. Especially when you have to deal with like taken wizards and things like that. Because they are so gosh darn annoying. 
Like, look at how much damage that does to the Hydra. It's ridiculous. And again, the fact that it's doing all of the damage in a three in a that a three bur a triple burst would do in a two burst is it's really helpful. I mean, it allows you to you don't burn through ammo quite as quickly. I'm honestly surprised that when they changed that, they didn't lower uh, the magazine size. But you know, I'm glad that they didn't. They just wanted to make this weapon more powerful, and I'm glad that they did because it was in a really bad state at the start. All right, actually, how is this uh, auto rifle? Are we going to see much better? Or is this some other war mind? There is only one war mind. But Rasputin is not here on Io. I believe he's been marooned on Earth ever since his network fragmented. Yeah, you think so? I don't know. Uh, d didn't we encounter him in on Mars as well in Destiny 1? Pretty sure you're wrong about that, Ikora. What? Pick it up before it collapses the war mind vault. Okay, well, I think we already established that it was on. Okay, so I believe we need to have head over to this one. So we need to hurry. Ignore the enemies. Don't don't worry about anything else. Just run over here. Pardon me, sir. I need you to go. Thank you. You as well. All right. Excuse me. Here, have one of those. Piece of crap. Jeez. All right. There we go. Fix that. Let's get down to the vault. All right. Let's hurry. So, take your time. Oof. Okay, easy now. And what you need to do is you need to make this jump. Otherwise, you will die. There we go. All right, we're moving. We're moving. We're ignoring all those enemies and we're moving. They can't follow us down here. And now, we need to scan the Almighty. So, yep. This looks like a war mine vault to me, I would say. Well, hi, guys. How's it going? Oh, no. Freaking taking hobgoblins. There we go. There's you. Absolutely just demolished. That's the other thing. It doesn't activate the hobgoblins' abilities if you do kill them with... Um, if you are able to kill them with... Uh, what's it? The Or hit them with the, ex the explosions from Graviton Lance. So that's kind of nice. That did not spawn Devour, which is fine. I'm kinda, I kind of want to save that, if I'm being honest. So yeah, this looks exactly like the worm I've... Oh, no, actually, it does not look the same. Not at all. This is very much caved in. Well, all right, let's head on down here. And activate the mainframe. The Warmind Network to begin a remote scan. I get the feeling something bad's going to spawn in here. Yep! I called it. Yeah, just a second. I just need to do this. Oh, that's one way of, t of doing damage to him. Beautiful. So we've already got him down to less than half health. We're off to a good start. All right, y'all can suck on that. Oh, geez, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. We're fine. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Okay, everything's everything. This is not cool. This is not cool. This is not cool. First of all, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I am super dead. I am super dead. I am super dead. Okay, so I know what I did wrong. Um, I Oh, wait, it actually starts him at the halfway checkpoint. I was going to say, the, what I did wrong is the fact that two sets of enemies spawned in because I did way too much damage way too quickly. So you need to kill those things. And then after killing those, then you can start laying into him. Those guys will also always drop power ammo, which is nice. I really need to get uh, I need to get Devour activated somehow. We need to rush it aside. Oh, that's killing everything. Never mind. Okay, okay. Everything is dying. Did I not say that Graviton Lance is amazing? Did you see all that freaking dam those damage numbers popping off? That was ridiculous. Oh, I love Graviton Lance. I love it so much. Okay, we need to kill you. Get out of here. Thank you. Ow. Okay, move, 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 move. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. I'm going to activate that. That did not activate. Why did that not activate? Don't do damage to me. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't take environmental damage. All right, hold on. No, no, no. Come back here. You do not go over there. You know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. All right, so Devour is activated. Now we should be off. We should be in a good spot now. So now I can start laying into this guy. Pardon me, sir. You need to have a couple of those. Yeah. Woo. Get out of here. You're done. You're done. Orly, the Almighty is inextricably bound to the harmonic resonance of the sun's magnetic flux tubes. The sun has tubes in it? If Savala blows up the Almighty, it'll take the sun with it. 
It's time I rejoined my fire team. Tell me again, speaker. What makes your guardians worthy of the light? What is the price of such power and immortality? Devotion. Self-sacrifice. Death. Death. Explain. Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery inspires sacrifice. Sacrifice leads to death. So, feel free to kill yourself. Devotion. Sacrifice. I was born an outcast. A runt. As is custom with the Cabal, I was cast aside and left for dead. I was taken in by an old scholar himself, disgraced, who saw in me something redeemable. He raised me, taught me, trained me, and in return, I would become a vehicle for his revenge against an empire that failed him, that failed itself. Rejection. Ridicule. Torment. It made me stronger. I gave everything to win, not just acceptance, but glory. Beneath my mask, Speaker, is the face of devotion and sacrifice. I will not take the light by force. To do so would be to admit failure. And I never fail. Now, do you see why I will be chosen? I see now. I see all that you have done. Our operation on the Jovian moon was a success. Once the cage is complete, we will have everything we need to begin the process of extracting the light. Dominus, everything we've worked for is here, for the taking. All that remains is your word. No, this is not the way, old friend. But it is the way, the only way. <laughs> 